Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom, and I'm reviewing a WWE event, a Macho Man. A nice Macho Man shirt. Well, let me see. I used to have to, get a new, have to get a new wrestling shirt. I haven't gotten one, I think, since wrestling. Oh, uh, Bullet Club Day, June something. Oh, it hasn't been that long. I wasn't that shirt that off? Was it May? Or April. Feels longer than that. Again, my name is Hobo. Tell me enough about my t shirt issues. My beautiful, most amazing girlfriend is still at her house. And unfortunately, un unfortunately this is kind of like that lean month for both of, both of us. I know she's looking to buy a new car. I have to make my payments on my truck. So hopefully we'll see her soon, though. See some videos. Oh, we'll, oh, wait. We won't see her. But we'll hear from her. Probably on Thursday when we do our prediction videos. Again, this is a week full of videos. I think Sunday I'm pulling double duty because I think I'm doing a SummerSlam live reaction. That means no WWE shows for you. Silly YouTube people. You get the finger wag. Shame from the WWE. And you get banned for 90 days, which sucks. And also, and this is long and. It's not worth getting banned for a silly pre-show. Um, I think you can actually see the pre-show for free on YouTube, though. If you go to WWE something. Um, also, on Saturday, I will be doing a... Oh, that's right. I'm doing a live stream. I have to set it up. For TakeOver Brooklyn 4. And we'll see how that goes. Again, I still have my SmackDown video to make. I'll make that tomorrow. Sunday, I think. I'm also make Sunday night after my live stream. I'm making my Lucha Underground video. Or maybe Saturday night. I don't know. I'm looking at my calendar. And it's covered up by a bunch of stuff. So let's talk about Raw. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um... Uh, I hate to do this, but unfortunately, I have to open this show with, with some sad news. Um, there was a death in the WWE universe. Um, Jim the Anvil Nighthard unfortunately passed away. I think it was 63. Um, I don't know exactly what it was from. I don't think it was from issues he had in the past. I mean, 63 is pretty old. And with all the abuse to wear and tear that he, that he took, I think they're reporting it was some kind of head trauma. He was doing something and, and fell and hit his head. I mean, he, he had the luck. Um, again, my condolences, even though I'm just some YouTube guy, goes out to the whole Nightheart and Heart family. Um, Natalia, just know that you're in our hearts and prayers. For, for this time. Um, the brother-in-law, Brett, again, there's only so much I can do here in Florida. Please accept my sincere condolences. I can't imagine how it would be like to lose a brother or to be in Natalia's place to lose a father. Oh, yeah. Again, I have a little video tribute. And it is what it is. I, I tried. Okay, welcome to a Hobo production kind of tribute to Jim the Animal Nightheart. Um, unfortunately, as probably a bunch of people watching this video knows, let me lower this it's here. There are copyright issues. Um, as most people know, kind of Jim the Animal Nightheart unfortunately passed away today. I believe he was 63, I think. Um, you can feel free to correct me. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Um, I know I've tried to make a couple other tributes, and I think one got copyrighted to the late Brian Christopher or Brian Lawler. Um, so hopefully this is this will be a good tribute. Even though my cell phone does not want to send email, me send text messages, I'll figure that out tomorrow. We'll do that at night. Again, so we have a little match. We have Hobo Tom. Who could it be against? Oh! 
There's the anvil himself. The man, Hobo Tom and Myers, part of the Heart Foundation. Just being a big guy that would beat up people, stroke his beard, and laugh. It is the one, the only, one half of the former WWE Tag Team Champions of the World. It's Jim, the Anvil Nightheart. Again, our condolences, my condolences do go out to his family, the whole Hart family. Uh, Natalia, and it's probably not much of a tribute to your father, but... Again, the fact that people are mentioning things, and, and I'm sure she's received a whole bunch of love from the WWE community. Uh oh. Okay, I have to lower this now. Classic. Why isn't my cell phone working? I gotta pay attention to this. We're gonna get beat. I think this is an extreme rules match too. So you know what that means? It's a hobo death match almost. Oh, too late there. Boom. Oh, going for the hobo shook so soon! Can't he put him away? And trying his hardest there. Oh, better break that. I have to figure out my buttons again. I haven't played this game in a while. This game's kind, kind of fun at times. Oh, there we go. Uh oh, wait a second. The finisher! The hobo finisher! Oh, wait a second. Oh! That's never a good sign, folks. That's, that's, that's just bad. Again, figure out Hobo's fight. Seer. Uh-oh. So just to check my time here. I still have six more minutes left. Uh oh. And I hate to do this to you. But oh, oh, he missed. Probably not the best thing to show. What? Oh, on to the sledgehammer. Let's see, I'll put up the volume just a little bit. Let's see here. I'm having a hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. I know what's going to happen next. Gloating. There we go. Right now. This could have been good for his career. Oh! You know, 
This is an Extreme Rules match. Anything goes. Each of these competitors is looking for the slow. Oh, right off the skull. Oh, my God. This one's not over yet. We've seen plenty of people come back from being in a lot worse shape. Okay, you did not want to do that against the hobo, especially a hobo with a steel chair. Oh! The heck's this? Oh, a classic Chris Baker. Oh. Uh oh, here we go. Inside the ring. Ouch. Could be it. Don't want to pin him yet, though. It's a legend. So, so put him out, unfortunately. Uh oh. An OMG moment. We saw. Th well. I won't tease this because I don't know what I'm putting this video in. But uh oh, uh oh, oh, did you get through? Oh, he missed the table. Uh oh, that's not good. Fix that table again. Oh wow! I didn't even know he had submission moves. I guess he learned something every day. Well, that's kind of like the really basic one. I think that's the Cobra Clutch. I've got this ladder set back up. Serious only. set here. There's no quit in these guys, but unfortunately only one of them can be victorious here tonight. Get back in the ring here. Chair the back. And he escapes with a kick out. I can't believe it. He just won't go away. Oh, there is no quit in this man tonight. This may settle. Oh, let's see if I set this up right now. I don't think I forget, I don't think he Oh, there's the table. This is one of those few instances where the person that actually sets up the table takes puts someone else through the table. Oh, oh the carnage. Oh the humanity. Oh he had the thing stuck in his tights. 
The hobo just doesn't care about what happens to him. It's just all on top of the table fragments. No, no. Oh wow, this is just vicious now. So this is gonna take up most most of the video, I think. He he what? I forget how I run that. Oh, okay, now I, now I remember how. Uh oh, I missed the elbow. I tried to drop the elbow on the chair. Oh, well, in a very fitting tribute, Jim the Anvil Nine Art wins. I mean, what could be a more fitting tribute than that? That was good. I'm actually kind of shocked at that. So, again, we wish all the Hart family, the Nightheart family, Natalia, Brett. I think there's some other hearts still there. Again, I'd like to pass along our condolences to the Nightheart family. And th thank you guys. And enjoy the rest of the video. So again, I, I hate to start the show off like that, but Jim, and, and I'll give a short tribute. I remember when he wrestled with the, as a member of the Hart Foundation. Um, he... He was involved in a tag title match versus the Bolsheviks, Demolition, I think the British Bulldogs at one time. Um, I think they partnered with the Legion of Doom. And, I mean, from the very limited accounts from, from Total Divas, I mean, he seemed to be a good guy. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everyone has faults, and, and fathers do try, do try to hide their faults more. But, I mean, he definitely did love his family, and, and he was a provider for him. Can't go wrong by that. And it's not saying because I'm a hobo, Tom, I'm some hobo here in Florida. But, again, it will be mentioned in, in, in the prayers and stuff, and, and just hope they can get through everything. Again, it, it, he wasn't exactly young, 63s, probably a little too young to, to, to leave everything. But nothing you can do or say about it, other than say you have our, you have at least this hobo support. For what that counts. Let's get to raw. Um, again, the only reason I, I started that is because Rhonda came out. She had an amazing delivery. It seemed really heartfelt. Didn't seem scripted. Um, the whole crowd was chanting. They were in Greensboro, North Carolina. They were all chanting "Natty, Natty, Natty." And, and that's good. I mean, it's always nice. You know when you get a good crowd, even Smarks know that there there is some respect to be shown. And, again, Natalia doesn't doesn't know anyone from anyone. She, she probably meets a thousand people a day want, want her autograph. But when the whole stadium kind of chants your name and you're not even there, it was really classy. And I'll talk about this now. The WWE actually put together a very good, very classy, and I was shocked at that tribute to Jim the Animal Nightheart. I mean, they really showed him more as a family man. Um, a lot about, well, not a lot, but, but just enough about his life to say, yeah, he will be missed. And when Ronda was speaking, you could hear a pin drop in that stadium. I mean, there's always that, that one one jerk that, 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 like, talks and stuff. You could actually hear him on the mic. It wasn't anything bad. It's just like, it's like, hey, you want some popcorn? Or probably something basic. Hey, put your cell phone away. Hey, let me hang up on you. It's just something, but you could hear a pin drop. Well, the old phrase is you could hear a mouse fart in that stadium. And it was really good. 
and it, it seemed really genuine, especially from Ronda Rousey. And the crowd, especially a smarky crowd like from North Carolina, knows the difference when you're being fed lines and when it actually comes from here. So again, kudos to Ronda Rousey, doing really good. Again, heart goes out to, to Natalia and her family. It's hard to say, say anything else about that. But the show, unfortunately, the show must go on. And Renee Young is now a member of Cushman Head, something to do somewhere. Who cares about Brian Cushman? I want more Renee Young. More Renee Young, less Cushman. She's good. The banter between her and Corey Graves is actually really good. And Michael Cole is there as the mediator. That's a really good working combination. And it seems like she's being groomed almost because it's only, wow, it's only about, about two or three more months till the evolution, the women's evolution pay-per-view. And who knows, maybe she'll play a major role in that. So she's being really groomed for it for, for evolution. Um, then this kind of, and, and, and I don't know the show goes on. So Alicia Fox and Alexa Bliss come out. Alicia Fox is wearing like a wreath on her head and a captain's jacket. I don't know. Something's not right there. With Alicia Fox. <laughs> I'm sorry, still do this best rendition. Of Alicia Fox. Um, Alexa Bliss. <laughs> then she's in character being the heel. She has local enhanced local talent enhancements for security. <laughs> Never do that, folks. If you want to be a pro wrestler, never, never be security. You're the first one that gets smacked around. Again, Bliss cheap shots Amber Moon. Moon hits Ronda Rousey. Rousey then then takes it out on security. Again, just the way you thought we go. This would lead to our first match, and this was actually this was amazing. This was actually the, the first match, and it was probably the best match of the night. We had Amber Moon versus Alexa Bliss. It was a good match. I mean, good creative wrestling. It was just fun. It told a story in the ring. Um, Bliss is good. Amber Moon is really good. And there's good exchanges. I mean, Alicia Fox getting involved. Ronda Rousey can take a bump. She can sell and take a bump. She's, I, I might turn on her as far as her ceiling goes. But it was okay. Um, again, like Ember Moon hit like a tilt the world gut buster. Again, if I see a move I haven't seen out of you, you're going to get, a, get more applause and you're going to get more hype. More hype! On the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show because, hey, you're doing something different. I like that. Makes it new and fresh to watch. And Alicia Fox eventually did cause the disqualification. <laughs> and wait. What's this? Dr. Keller. We have a special guest on to talk about WWE math. What is this thing? Why are you not prepared, Hobo Tom, for someone of my stature to come in here and be a guest on your show? What is wrong with you? My name is Dr. Keller. I'm here to talk a little bit about the math that goes on in the WWE universe. And I was invited by Hobo Tom to promise the feast. You got some shoe leather. He's going to give me of aluminum for payment. I'm here to talk a little bit about the math that goes on in these wrestling events. And it's actually very simple. And the math, for the most part, there we go. I look very dapper, as I should. I'm like, you, you, Hobo! I don't know what he's doing right now. Might be drinking out of the toilet, as far as I know. Let's talk about the math. Math in the WWE is very simple. Even the very basic people can understand it. Very simple for the go-home show. 
Let's make some definitions first. The definition of the Go Home Show is the is the show before the major pay per view event. So technically today was the Go Home Show for Raw. Tomorrow will be the Go Home Show for SmackDown. Wednesday shall be the Go Home Show for NXT. So whenever you talk about the math with the WWE, you must be aware of certain criteria that has to be made for any of these events to occur. First of all, you must have a match between the two opponents. They must square off. Or the most common again is the match. You must have a face-off between the two opponents. <laughs> What's wrong with this place? How about Tom? Do you not keep up your 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 Squalor. Terrible. But again, for the math to take place, you must have a face-off between the two potential opponents at the pay-per-view. For the first instance, as I was so invited for, for finding out what a shoe leather, shoe leather for a guest, my stature, had... Alexa Bliss again faced this Amber Moon. And of course, you know the math. And the math does not look good for one rounder Rousey, who is Alexa Bliss's opponent at SummerSlam. The math states he who stands tall at the go home show loses the pay per view. So therefore, unfortunately, Ronda Rousey is not going to become the woman's raw champion. There we go. We had a, we had a little visit there from Dr. Keller. Please, everyone, give Dr. Keller a good clap. And next part, I mean, just a review of the Heyman interview. Um, you have Curtin Baron Corbin backstage, Curtin Dolph, Drew. And, eh, it's a contract signing. So you know what's going to happen. There's going to be a table involved somewhere. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Then our next match, you had Baron Corbin versus Tyler Breeze as kind of a warm-up. It, it was an okay match. I mean, this was like, I had a feeling it was a glorified squash match. And we had a glorified squash match. It was a ham sandwich. And again, because it's a ham sandwich, I mean, one of the things that Tyler Breeze lost to his signature, not even a finisher. Renee's playing up Tyler Breeze. It's like, he's not, he, he's good. Don't get me wrong. Not that good, though. That was really a ham sandwich match. And then we have our next match, which was Jinder Mahal and Kevin Owens versus Finn Balor. And surprise entrance made by Kurt Angle or Braun Strowman. This was another fun match. I mean, this was a surf and surf quality match. It was fun. I mean, the only reason why it wasn't a Flaming Yon match is because I thought, and maybe it was because time makes people forget and time heals everything, but I want to say a month ago we had this match. And I was just waiting, waiting for Braun to use Finn as a weapon. Uh, Finn, geez, he's ama he's an amazing counter-wrestler. He knows his stuff. Kevin Owens is a great talker, though. And those two could have the, the match of the century. But you never know. Yeah, it was really fun stuff. I mean, Strowman gets in, Kevin, Kevin Owens runs, he runs into the crowd. Again, exactly what you expect from this. Um, eventually, Braun uses Finn as a weapon. And again, I mean, it's just really fun. He then chases, I mean, Finn Balor lands on both Jinder and Kevin Owens. Um, Braum just strokes KO around the ring. 
and just begins again. <laughs> he uses Sunil Singh as a weapon. You have Finn and Jinder Mahal. I mean, Jinder's obviously the stronger. Again, you have the clash of styles. You have the, the different contrast of styles. It was good stuff. Um, again, Jinder Mahal, Kevin Owens, they know, they know how to be a heel tag team. They know how to cut the ring in half and use that use to the advantage. Again, good shots of Finn trying to get the tag, but eventually Braun Strowman does get the hot tag in. <laughs> Chases him around. He uses Sunil Singh as a weapon. Throws him against Kevin Owens. Um, Finn gets... Um, they get the pinfall. However, Dr. Keller, is that you again? He might be a recurring person on the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast Show. You should always like, share, comment, and subscribe to Dr. Keller. Why don't you come in here for a moment? Hobo Tom, you have not made this place any better in a few minutes. But you had to take over and talk about the rest of the show. What's wrong with you, Hobo Tom? Go figure out what you're doing back there. For a proper meal. A nice glass of fine scotch and brandy for a person like Dr. Keller. Again, I've been invited again to do this a second time. Baron Corbin, the math. Again, there was no match this time, so we had an alternate equation, whereas you attacked Finn Balor, also known as the Vit. Or more formally known as Fuggle Devitt. But Finn Balor, again, Baron Corbin, in the alternate math, separate equation, you attacked him, you stood tall. So, therefore, in your match, Baron Corbin, the constable of Raw, you're losing. And Finn Balor shall win. And that led to our next match. Oh, there was some pretty good chance. The other thing, Flo Rida does a lot of stuff for the WWE. He does, you know. Uh, again, you get the woo-woo, too sweet. Out there, whenever Finn's there. And it was okay. And then we have this Ricky Roberts, who's obviously an enhancement talent. <laughs> and then Elias comes out, starts to start run him down, and tries to be complimentary. <laughs> Corey Graves had the night, had the line of the night, because he said that Ricky Roberts looked like he was conceived the local American Legion Hall. Shot to all those indie wrestlers out there. <laughs> that that was funny. Um. Again, Bobby Lashley came out. I guess it was a match. It's like suit match. It was a super squash match. I mean, you know the guy was not gonna gonna win. And Ricky Roberts made the mistake of hitting Bobby Lashley over the head over the back with the guitar. Not the best career choice, our buddy. You know, it was a squash match, and you know, it was, you know, what it was going to be. It's a can of soup match. It was okay. Uh, then we had a B team promo. <laughs> Doctor Keller, you have something to say again about this promo? Yes, I was brought out one more time by the hobo attended. To whatever things a hobo does. Do not know about that. But I am quite impressed with a young Bo Dallas. He knows what a slide rule is. I do like that. For a slide rule is a device used to calculate triangulation for the advent of calculators. You would align the slide with a very set of pre numbers, such as sign equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. 
the cosine equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent equals the opposite over the adjacent. What is this creature? Comes in. Hmm. There makes a sound against me. So again, I am very impressed that Bo Dallas? What kind of name is that? Actually knows how to use a slide rule. Impressive. I did not know that either. Thank you, Dr. Keller. You're going to give me a guess back here pretty clearly, I think. Then, of course, this led to the six-man tag match. Again, it was a, it was a surf and turf quality match. There were three surf and turf matches on a Raw. And this is a go-home show. Normally, the go-home shows are boring. The heck was I watching today? But yeah, the Delete of Worlds versus the Revival versus, versus the B Team. That was fun. I mean, Dawson's good. But one thing I will say they need more hardy compound matches. If they're going to keep. And I know Matt's kind of teased, and he's, he's getting old. And he kind of does have the, the, the dad bod going. But, I mean, if you're going to keep the, the deleted universe or, or the Woken universe, you do need more vignettes from the Hardy compound. The B, the B team at the Hardy compound? Great. The revival at the Hardy compound? Really great. So, again, well, we'll see what happens. And Dawson's good. I mean, again, Dash and Dawson, they're the classic tag team. They've, they've studied this stuff. They're awesome. And you know it was getting serious when Matt Hardy takes the shirt off. Whenever a wrestler takes their shirt off, you know, okay, now it's on. Uh, again, there was a heart line from the revival. Again, a, a tribute to the Heart Foundation, to Jim the Animal Liner. I liked it. Every, everyone kind of shared. It was a good, fuzzy, warm feeling there. And again, there was a Tower of Doom in these spot whenever you have a, a, a three... Three-way elimination, three three-way tag team match. There's always a Tower of Doom in there. The the classic Indian moves always come out. Um, Dash, don't fly. You're you're not good at it. No flips, just fists. Although they did have an OMG WWE 2K17 little suplex to the outside of the ring. Matt Hardy suplex. Dawson, I think. No, Dash. Whoever, whoever has the Fu Manchu and no hair. He got, he got OMG'd out to the outside of the ring. Thankfully, everyone was there. However, because of the trickiness of the B team, and Curtis Axel is really smart. He did love to learn something from his father, Mr. Perfect. They get the win because he made a blind tag on the Revival. I forget who. Revival did not realize that. They hit the shattering machine on Matt Hardy. Chris Axel said, ah, ah, threw him out of the ring, got the pin. B team wins. Surf and surf quality stuff. Wow, this was a short, this was a weird raw. Uh, Roman Reigns, he had a great look on his face. He is, he, he, he's, when he's allowed to do things that are natural, he's so good. The B team looked back and Roman Reigns just like said, whoa. Um, Roman Reigns, it was a promo. It was okay. Paul Heyman came out. Again, Heyman swerved him, sprayed him with. Again, Heyman swerved him, sprayed him with pepper spray. And then you had Brock Lesnar come and destroy him. Again, good lead up. Yes. Yes, Dr. Keller, one more time. Come over here, please. Again, Brock Lesnar, you did the F5. However, though, there is a slight variable in this equation, 
And that could be the fact that Braun Strowman didn't necessarily stand tall against when he faced his opponent, Kevin Owens. He just chased him off stage. Both look rather weak. So this introduces quite a conundrum because Brock Lesnar did stand strong and stood tall against Roman Reigns, but yet Braun Strowman was again intriguing. And then finally, and thank you, sir. You've learned a lot about WWE math tonight. Should all do your math. And thank you, sir. You've learned a lot about WWE math tonight. Should all do your math homework at home. Um, again, they, they had like a like a double jo jobber entrance because when the announcer was talking about what happened to Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, there was a match going on in the background. They saw in the background like the wrestlers there. Go to the wrestling match. It was Titus Worldwide or Glorious Wide or Worldwide Glorious team of, again, Titus O'Neil, Apollo Crews, and Bobby Roode versus the Authors of Pain and Mojo Rally. Like, what the heck? I think this match only took a couple of minutes. It was it was good. I mean, don't get me wrong. They did have its moments. It had its spots. It's a ham sandwich. And good action. It was just really quick. And Rude wins. Titus Worldwide. Worldwide wins. And the Nightheart Tribute, I, I talked about that. Um, oh, yeah. The, the pre-show for SummerSlam starts at 5 p.m. That means it's going to be about six hours of wrestling. I'm glad I'm at home where I can enjoy my breakfast. Ooh, grapefruit soda and tequila. That's what I'm doing. So I think Monday I just have to take my cat to the vet. So that's okay. No work. I can just take her to the vet, come home, take a nap, let her recover from her shots. I always feel bad when I take my cat to the vet. They stick two things up her butt and poke needles in her legs. Ugh. Try and stick up this hobo's butt. Yeah, it can be a lot more than a growl. But then you had Sasha Banks, and this was a quick match too. Again, kind of a ham sandwich match. It wasn't it was okay. Versus Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot looks better with short hair for some reason. Some women can pull off their short hair. Ruby Riot's one of them. I mean, how do you love Lace? Oh, wait a second. I mean, Ruby Riot. How do you love Lace again? Good start by her. Um, again, she was doing the small joint manipulation. I know she suffered an injury. Don't think it was anything major, though. That's kind of one of those things you have to say, hey, the doctor says, you know what? You have to let it heal. And again, doing joint small joint manipulation, great. I do like the mat wrestling. And it was good. Um... Ruby Riot can talk. And one of the things you like about her, she can talk during her match. It's not, it's not saying, hey, hit the elbow. Like John Cena would. Or it's like, okay, back suplex. Five moves of death. No, now six moves of death. Yeah. So again, Ruby Riot picked up the win. Again, there was interference really from the Riot Squad, Liv Morgan. And Sarah Logan. I'm going to think there for a second. Still think of her as Crazy Mary Dobson every so often. But it was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was a ham sandwich. Then you have, again, the, the final part, the contract signing. I'm kind of bored of contract signings. The same thing happens. There's always a table involved. The table goes flying. The table gets broken. Big schmoz at the end. Um, this is going to be interesting. Dr. Keller, you have something else to say? Sir, come on in. Always enjoy your insight, sir. Finally.
we have the last segment of this show for common plebes. I like the truth theater that a doctor such as myself is accustomed to. Where you had Seth Rollins and the lunatic fringe, Dean Ambrose, stand tall against. Dolph Ziggler? What kind of surname is Ziggler? And Andrew McIntyre. Got a proper Scottish surname. Well, the math says Dolph Ziggler will retain his Intercontinental Championship. I believe that is all the math that needs to be explained. Again, it's a very simple process. I don't know why this hobo cannot figure that out by his own. Again, looking through these notes, what is a woot woot? I'm not aware of that. I don't know if I should make a return. All depends what the hobo does. Hobo Tom! And I mean, oh, I want to say hi to Shay Chun and Zhang Li. Hello. Like, share, subscribe, comment, send me an email sometime. And make sure you said hi to Seth Rollins when he came to visit you in China. Then Seth Rollins comes in again, contract signing, blah, 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 brass ring, something. Um, Dean Ambrose made his return, though. Dean looks jacked. He got a haircut and he got scruffy. Ooh.